guys, it's Audra. Welcome to another video. So today's topic is about adrenal fatigue and caffeine. A lot of people are experiencing adrenal fatigue and they don't even realize it. They don't even know what it is. And it's going undetected and like, it's actually really difficult for doctors to even diagnose this. So I just want to talk about some signs and symptoms you can be looking for. Chances are you probably are experiencing this at least on some level. I think a lot of people are, but some people even more so than others. What is adrenal fatigue? Adrenal fatigue is when your adrenals, your hypothalamus and your pituitary gland, or your HPA axis, that's the hypothalamus pituitary axis, it's not working correctly. It's working subpar. I've talked about the uh, HPA axis before, specifically in like uh, videos about girls getting their periods back, and this again is a huge just indicator that all of this stuff works together. I keep really trying to push this that all of your hormones work in tandem. It's not just a, it's not as compartmentalized as we like to think that they are. When one is thrown off, it's a domino effect, they're all thrown off. So again, the hypothalamus and pituitary gland, they're very connected with your reproductive hormones. So a lot of you people having uh, reproductive issues, menstruation issues, testosterone issues, whatever, you probably are going to really gain a lot from this video because this could be affecting you as well. So your adrenals actually release stress hormones. And so this is a natural phenomenon that your body does. It's a, just a normal biological process to help you deal with stress on an everyday basis. Um, specifically like high stressful situations, that's what it's really meant for from a biological standpoint. But, you know, it can also take care of smaller type of stressful situations like maybe you are just like having a bad day at work or something or you get in a confrontation with somebody or something like that like it's it's just designed for stress and so what happens is over time the more and more and more stress that your body is exposed to which when I say stress everybody likes to just think that stress is you know oh my gosh I had a stressful day that is not just stress stress goes far deeper than that and we're going to talk about that but the more stress that your body is exposed to over time like chronic stress it causes havoc on your adrenal glands and they become very weakened when they're stimulated for a really long time so some examples of stress would be like maybe you have a really stressful job or maybe you are in a stressful like school situation like you really stress yourself out over your grades or like exams, or maybe you have some bad relationships in your life. Maybe you just moved. Maybe you are on a low calorie or low carb diet. You do a lot of excessive exercise. You no, know, or a combination of any of those, like anything in your life. And maybe you're that type of person that little things get to you like all the time, like sitting in traffic. You just want to like, you just, you can't deal with it. Like you're just like, I can't deal with this. Every little thing gets under your skin. So when the stress happens, basically your body goes into the fight or flight response. That's what happens. That's why these stress hormones are released. And when this fight or flight response is released and it happens all the time, it's chronically depleting your system, okay? And it's kind of like if you lived in a country that was just like, there was just war all the time. And like every time you walked out of your house, you were stressed out. Like every time you went to the market, every time you got in your car, like you were just like all the time, like, oh my God, I'm paranoid. Like I just imagine that, how, how like stressful that would be. That's basically what your mind is going through and your body is going through on a daily basis with all these just tiny little stressors or even huge stressors that are going on in your life. One way that you can kind of tell if you might be dealing with this is if you are like constantly tired, constantly exhausted, constantly fatigued. Um, maybe you have, you experience a little bit of depression. Like no matter how much you sleep, like you could go to bed at like six o'clock that night and wake and sleep till eight o'clock the next day. Like you are still exhausted. Like you're still tired, like no amount of sleep help. And not to mention one way that you can really tell about this is if in the mornings after you've slept, uh, and let's say you slept like eight hours it's almost impossible for you to wake up. Like, you're just like, I cannot get up out of bed. I'm so tired. But on the flip side, you could stay up all night. Like you're like a night owl. Like you kind of get your second wind really late. The issue with this is that your cortisol is 
your cortisol cycle is getting is totally off. Cortisol would uh, rise naturally, like in the morning, and that's what helps you wake up. That's what helps you get up out of bed and get ready for the day. And then it would lower naturally at night so that you could go to sleep. So that's how it kind of functions. That's kind of the cycle. But when it gets all disturbed and messed up, now you can't wake up in the morning and you stay up at night. And maybe you are experiencing you're just exhausted all the time. And also like you would kind of be like, you'd find that you have almost no motivation. So for like important things or exciting things, you're just kind of like, eh, like I don't really, I don't really care. You know, like maybe you're graduating and you could like care less, or maybe you're getting married and you could care less, or maybe you just got a new job, or maybe, um, you know, like nothing really excites you anymore. You feel kind of just like flat when you should be excited. How this all connects to other hormones is, you would notice that maybe you have some thyroid issues, um, and that's really hard to detect. Actually, you would want to work hand in hand with a really skilled practitioner to figure out what exactly is going on, but regardless, the healing process is going to be the same. And two, when your adrenals are super, super weakened and stressed out, they will steal from your sex hormones. Maybe you notice that you have a low sex drive or you don't have a period. Even you have low levels of aldosterone, which aldosterone is the hormone that I talked about in my salt video that when your salt intake is extremely low, your aldosterone will go uh, extremely high. And so what happens in this case is actually opposite. Your aldosterone goes very low and so you really start craving a lot of salt. What do most people do when they when they are super tired, exhausted, specifically in the mornings? They reach for coffee. They reach for caffeine. They reach for a Coke. They reach for their pre-workout, which is just 100% caffeine, basically, before they go work out. They need something to wake them up because their cortisol is not working correctly. Their adrenals have been burned out, basically, or they're lacking, at least. And they need something to just kind of give them that wake-up call, that extra push. So they go to coffee thinking that that is going to give them energy, which it's not. What happens when you drink coffee is that your brain sends out a message to your pituitary gland to release these hormones telling your adrenals to produce the stress hormones. The stress hormones are adrenaline and cortisol. So every time you drink caffeine, whether it's pre-workouts, energy drinks, um, you know, or, or using any type of stimulant, like a diet pill, some people get really stimulated off of like chocolate and you know, stuff like that. It sends out this message to release cortisol and adrenaline and when that happens, you you're, it triggers your body into this fight or flight thing again. So it's like every time you drink that caffeine or eat that stimulant or whatever, you are it's almost like your body is being put in that imminent danger thing again. So it's almost like you drink a cup of coffee and your body releases these hormones and your body can't tell like oh I'm getting coffee or oh I'm getting like an espresso or I'm getting chased by a lion like in the middle of the jungle like it doesn't know it's going off of hormones so when the hormones like start going nuts it's like we've got to produce whatever we got to do to get this person out of danger regardless if it's just a cup of coffee or you're running from like a gorilla you know over time as you can see think about how much caffeine most people drink on just a daily basis whether it's from cokes it's from energy drinks it's from coffee it's from tea maybe they're eating a lot of chocolate maybe you're taking certain pills like whatever and so your your body is chronically and constantly trying to deal with this stressful situation day in day out numerous times a day and as this happens you end up building up a huge tolerance to this that's why when people start drinking coffee they can't drink a lot right off the bat because it's just so intense for them. But over time, like, you can drink coffee all day long and you don't even feel stimulated at all. But just because you don't feel stimulated does not mean that your hormones are not reacting the same way as if you did feel stimulated. That is the takeaway. Some people will, like, even brag and be like, oh my gosh, like, I can drink two pots of coffee or whatever or take two scoops of pre-workout and it doesn't even affect me, you know? Uh, so I, I guess it's not really doing anything to me. It's like, again, just because you don't see what's happening on the outside doesn't mean that there's not something going on on the inside. And that is huge because you can build up a tolerance and like you can be drinking coffee at midnight and then fall right to sleep, but your stress hormones are still working. So this is why I tell people, look, stay away from caffeine. Stay away from any type of stimulant like that. And a side note on caffeine is that it 
completely dehydrates your skin, uh, when cortisol is increased, your skin really gets dehydrated. You're probably going to experience premature wrinkling and aging. So like, just don't drink it. Back to the stress thing, not only is caffeine stressful, but there's also other things in your life that can really be like a stimulant to these hormones and to your adrenals and lead to this type of adrenal burnout as well. So this would include like anger, rage, like you have a difficulty just dealing with stressful situations. Maybe you're a very anxious, nervous type of person. Maybe you're very high strung. You drink a lot of caffeine or alcohol, obviously. There's a lot of arguing going on in your life. There's a lot of hatred going on in your life. There's a lot of instability going on in your life. Maybe you listen to a lot of loud music. You watch a lot of scary, like horror type of movies. Constantly like getting bad news, like really depressing type of news. You are a big um, advocate of vigorous exercise, high intensity exercise, endurance exercise. Maybe you partake in like recreational drugs. You worry a lot. You like, you're like busy all the time. Like you never sit down, you never rest. Like from sun up to sundown, you're just going, going, going. You have like, like sexual preoccupations. Maybe you're in the middle of like an extramarital affair or you're cheating on your boyfriend or your girlfriend, like, and you like get a thrill out of that, like that type of thing. It's kind of like a, like, you know, when you feel like you've done something wrong, but you kind of like it and you're kind of like, you kind of get this thrill on the inside, like kind of like a stressful, but like you kind of like that type of thrill. You changed your diet recently, um, specifically doing a lot of fasting, a lot of cleansing, like low calorie diets, low carb diet. All of this can lead to adrenal burnout, adrenal fatigue. I would really encourage you to research this on your own. Um, you know, and there's varying levels of this. Like some people are just fatigued. Some people are legit like burnt out. Um, some people are in the beginning stages. Like it's not just like either you are or you aren't. Like, you know, it takes time and the worse that you, your lifestyle is and the more that you keep pushing yourself and the more that you are involved in whatever that you're doing that is causing way too much stress, way too much like high anxiety type of thrill stuff that you know like it just doesn't feel natural to your body it's really intense like it's really like you know like the loud music and the loud yelling and screaming and fighting and just like the instability and you worry all the time and you're like constantly wondering like you know like what am I gonna do with my life um, I gotta go exercise I gotta stay on my diet like I'm constantly berating myself and telling myself I'm not beautiful. Like it's just negative, negative, negative all the time. You're not sleeping enough. Um, you're taking pills. You're drinking a lot of coffee. Like you just kind of see that whole lifestyle is unstable, you know? And the sad thing is, is like, you're probably not even realizing that now. You're probably not even realizing that until watching this video right now, because in our culture, it's so normal. Like it's, and it's even applauded to be like, a go-getter, a high-strung person, stay up all night, work all day, go do your workout, be on a strict diet, drink your coffee, you know, do your high-intensity endurance training. You have to like really sit down and say, what is going on with my life? Like, why is this happening? What can I do to fix it? Here are some tips about how to fix this. Again, I really encourage you, if you really think like this is you, you can try these tips out. They help a lot. But for some people, they literally need like legit medical assistance with this. You can go get your hormones tested. You can even order hormone saliva tests online and just do it at home and mail it in and see kind of like what your own cortisol and stuff is. To start off, sleep and rest is huge. Sleeping as much as you possibly can. I tell everybody that I do a consultation with, be in bed no later than 10 p.m. every single night if you can make it happen. If you have a job where you have to work late, you know, if this is a big issue for you, maybe you need to find a new job, switch shifts, do something like that. If you can't do that, like I totally understand. I'm not saying like, oh, you gotta figure out your job. Like I know what it's like, trust me. Do the best you can. Get in bed as early as you can. Try to stay um, as calm as you can before you go to sleep. Um, but get in bed early and sleep for a long time, as long as you possibly can. The longer the better. Um, if you find yourself waking up, go back to sleep. 
get a night mask, put it on your face, black everything out, sleep in a really dark, dark room, uh, get it kind of cold in there, like turn the air down to at least under 70 for sure. Um, cover all the lights, even like lights from your computer, your phone, your alarm clock, the little light seeping in through the window, cover that, make it dark, have the opportunity um, and the desire to take a nap in the day, take a nap. Like you need sleep. This is the best thing for your body to restore and recover. Thing is avoiding stressful people and situations. So if there are people in your life that are literally just like draining the energy out of you, you know, I'm not one to just totally cut people out of your life. I understand that has to happen sometimes depending on the situation. I would really encourage you to go to that person, talk to them, be open with them and just say, look, like my health is on the line here. I need your help with this. I can't fight anymore. I can't fuss anymore. I can't like, have all these type of confrontational issues. Um, and you know, that's going to vary from situation to situation. Like some people you just can't get away with. I mean, get away from some people you can, some people you need to make amends with. Like that's a personal thing you're going to have to figure out, but work through that. Same thing with stressful situations. Maybe you know that if you go to this place, like it's going to just stress you out and you know, it, that's just not a good environment for you to be around. Uh, but I do want to make a note about this. Don't use this as an excuse to like ditch people, you know, like your true family and friends, like, especially if you have an eating disorder and you're like, well, I can't go to that restaurant because it's too stressful. Well, that's a different situation. Like you need to work through that fear and go to the freaking restaurant. I'm talking more about like, you know, stressful situations like putting yourself on a roller coaster just to make yourself feel what it's going to feel like to die, you know, or jumping out of an airplane or, you know, watching really scary, like sad, depressing movies and stuff like that. Don't do stop all of the excessive exercise. I talk about this all the time. People are addicted to high intensity endurance, cardio, push yourself to you're going to throw up, like push yourself to you can't walk, push yourself till like you're so exhausted that all you want to do is just go lay down in the bed and sleep for the rest of the day. Stay away from that and do restorative type of exercises like walking, get out in nature and hike. Don't put like a 40 pound backpack and like go trekking for 40 miles. Like relax. I do some yoga, Tai Chi, do meditation, scripture memory, deep breathing, stuff that you can just calm down and a part of that too you have to understand this is a lifestyle change this isn't just you go and do your whole stressful day for like nine hours out of the day and then for 30 to 45 minutes you spend like just sitting there watching like a hallmark movie or something and reading your bible you know and doing some deep breathing exercises like this has to take place in your whole life like in every area of your life when you get to work don't let that coworker get on your nerves. Chill out, do the best you can, go home. When you're at school, don't try to be a perfectionist and get all A's. Have fun, hang out with your friends, learn some stuff, go home. When you're around someone stressful, take some deep breaths, just be nice, be respectful, go home. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it has to be a daily, moment by moment, de stressing type of mentality. If you are going to do weights, I encourage you to do low to moderate weight uh, and very low reps. This doesn't need to be intense where you're powerlifting and trying to become like an Olympic gold medalist for the deadlift, you know, like you need to rest. I hope that point is coming across very clear. Obviously stop the caffeine, stop the alcohol, stop the drugs, stop the anything else in your life that is just causing you stress. And one thing I like to do is I like to keep a list. It's like a gratitude type of list or even like a prayer journal. You know, you can write down the things that you're actually thankful for and kind of start cultivating this mindset of, you know what, like, I do have a lot of good things going on for me in my life. God's really blessed me. Like, I don't deserve this, but I do I have really good kids. I've got a really nice uh, husband. I've got uh, a good job. I, you know, I have my health for the most part. I'm, you know, lucky enough to wake up every day and see the sun shining. Like, you know, any little thing that you could be grateful for write it down be the, just that you have a car or that you live in a nice safe neighborhood or that you have good friends you have supportive family like anything that you have food on the table you know write it down and really see 
there's a lot of stuff in my life that I do need to be thankful for. Spend a lot of time with loved ones, friends, watch funny, uplifting uh, movies. Another thing I always tell people to do, unfollow anyone that you follow on YouTube, Instagram, Tumblr, whatever that stresses you out. Like, if it's too stressful, if you see it and you're just like, I can't stand when they start talking about that, or, you know, I can't stand to scroll through her pictures and see that, or I can't, like, unfollow, unsubscribe. <laughs> like, even if I stress you out, like, unfollow me. You know, I don't want to be a stressor in your life. <laughs> like, especially if your health is on the line, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Figure out who and what in your life is triggering you in these ways. And the biggest thing about this is just remembering that the whole motto, like, don't worry, be happy, is probably the best life motto you can take at this point. You got to stop worrying about stuff. You got to be happy. And remember, hey, and remember that your body loves peace and consistency and harmony. Our bodies do not work well off of extremes, uh, whether it's super, super intense exercise, stress, crazy diets, like, it doesn't like that. It likes consistency. That's why I'm not a big fan of doing like fasts and cleanses and just throwing the body out of balance. Like a huge thing with traditional Chinese medicine that I talk about a lot is respecting your body. Your body is set up to where it can take care of itself. You don't have to go and try to do all this crazy stuff. Like if you just let it work, it's gonna work itself out fine. But you have to give it the right tools. You have to respect it in that way and don't abuse it, you know? Give yourself rest, give yourself time, and this is gonna take a long time for everybody. Like, some people, it depends on how far you are on the spectrum. Uh, so, I hope that helps. Hope you guys have a fabulous day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.